What's up guys, Brunsnick's back, and I'm here to talk about whether you should use pin down layouts on symmetrical core balls. Since the USB-C band weight holes, a lot of layouts that we used to love, pin down, hold down, are irrelevant. We cannot use those layouts anymore. Is drilling the pin down without the benefit of the extra hole going to create a massive performance loss for most bowlers? I'm going to get this chill out on the lanes and test it with Specto data to see just that. My original Deviate Chill in the review video, which I'll link in the description below, struck non-stop. So I'm going to see if this one can do the same thing or if I struggle with carry. We're about to find out. But before we get to all that, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Now, let's see this pin down chill get to work. All right, it's time to talk about pin down layouts on symmetrical balls. Whether they are usable today, I'm a pretty average bowler, 330 RPM is usually where I sit. Ball speed pretty average around 17 off my hand unless I'm just hucking it or throwing it slow. So we're gonna talk about this Deviate Chill, which you guys know I struck a lot with in my last video. But we used a different layout this time. Pin distance is exactly the same. We used four and a half inch pin, but I used a 75 degree VAL instead of a 20. So that puts the pin below the fingers instead of above the fingers, which you guys are used to seeing. So I'm gonna test this ball, all different angles like I normally do, and see what we see. Got Specto running, let's get to it. Okay, so far so good. So the main things we're gonna talk about are performance related, right? So when the USB-C took the balance holes away and it said no more balance holes, a lot of these pin down layouts that people loved had the balance hole down. So that changed a lot. The other thing is when you drill pin down balls, look what happens to the flare. Tight, tight flare rings because when you drill pin down, you lower the differential. And the other thing we'll talk about is if you have a high track and low tilt, and we're definitely gonna talk about that for a little bit. All right, so that was the first shot. Threw it pretty straight. Struck, hit pretty hard. Okay. That ball started up a little bit earlier. Maybe got a little soft with the speed. But it definitely still hooks. I mean, there's no doubt that the ball's still going to be hooking. But whether this ball is still going to be usable and versatile, like pinup type layouts. So, I mean, that's the main factor, okay? Normally on this ball, I got a lot of flare. I was getting like six inches of flare. I'm lucky to be getting like three to four inches of flare now. That's going to be a big difference in ball reaction for me. Now, there are some guys out there that track pretty low and they have a high rev rate. They could probably get away with this. I'm gonna take my re-rack and talk about this a little bit more. So if you have a high rev rate and you're really trying to blend out that front to back, you know, and a lot, you know it, it can be usable, but for the low speed, low rev guys, might not be a great option for you. All right, I'm moving five off of that. Lanes are hooking today. We got a fresh pattern out there, but uh, it's stripped really nice because the back ends are flying today. Okay, did not strike, did not go through the pins. And I think we're gonna see a common theme here, and I'm hoping I'm wrong, but I don't think I will be, is when I start opening up the angles, I'm gonna have to slow down the speed a lot to get that ball through the pins because it's gonna wanna have a tendency to roll forward. And we'll see that with Specto data, especially paying attention to impact angle versus entry angle. I have a feeling you're gonna see that entry angle a lot lower because the ball is so much slower to respond and that uh, back end reaction is not going to be as great either because the impact angle is going to stop hooking and roll forward. All right, let's slow that down a little bit. Definitely kept the speed up because I didn't want it to hook through the pins, through the face I should say. So let's see what happens here. Okay, sent that a little wider. Came back and went through the pins pretty nice, but pretty gradual motion there. 
You know, it didn't really come off the spot hard and it still rolled pretty forward. You know, I'm gonna be looking at the Specto data afterwards. But I'm almost certain that compared to the last video, you're gonna see less impact angle, especially in relation to the entry angle. That means the ball is rolling forward when it's lower or closer to the entry angle. All right, let's throw one more shot from there. I'm just gonna play it more on the oil. Okay, you guys can see as it went through the pins, didn't quite get through the pins, still struck, but definitely deflected there. So let's move five more. Let's start opening up the angles. Let's see if we can see a little bit more oil on this ball. Yeah. So that's the main thing you're gonna see with pin down layouts is tighter flare rings. And for those that track really high, a pin down layout like this can actually roll over the thumb. And if it doesn't flare a lot, you're gonna get that thump, 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 and the ball's never gonna perform. That is no good. Before we used to be able to fix that with an extra hole, but we can't use those. Can we? All right, I'm moving five left. Again, we're 10 left from where we began. All through the oil. Oh. So do I think pin down has a place in today's game? On symmetrical balls, not a lot. I don't drill them personally. I know there's probably some guys on tour that do, but they are very condition specific, you know. Whereas in the past, if I see that ball not, not check up and go, put a big old balance hole down, raise that bow tie up, bring the track a little more inverted, and all of a sudden I got the ball to come off the spot hard. All right, let's try to send this one a little bit wider than that and see what it, how it responds to more dry boards out, outside. So for those that watched the first video at the chill with the pinup, I struck a lot. I actually threw 12 shots total in the whole session, but I only used 11 in the video. I think the 12th one I threw way out the window, it just wasn't a good shot off my hand, so I didn't use it, but I struck every single time on that, on that video. Here, I wouldn't say I'm struggling, but I think I'm gonna struggle with carry, right? You know, I'm not getting the ball through the pins consistently, so that's gonna lead to maybe some issues with carry down the road here. Let's throw one more shot from this zone, and we'll move left. It's in the oil a little bit more. Okay. So the ball is very easy to control. Whereas with the pinup, I saw a lot more response. This one sets up real nice, but I have to be kind of good with it at the bottom, if that makes sense. You know, I have to be able to get it off my hand clean. If I kind of grab one, it's gonna over skid, shoot the spot, and come in way behind the head pin and not strike. All right, let's move another five or 15 left of where we began. Let's see what pin down from this angle does. Yeah, another flat hit. Not that the cover is any less strong than it was. It's the same ball, same cover, same pin distance, but just by going up and down with the VAL, VAL angle, whole lot of difference with flare potential, and that's a whole lot of difference in hook potential. Flare, track flare is your friend, especially if you're on the lower rev side, which I'm kind of in the middle, I guess. I don't know. But if you're higher rev, you can get away with this. But for average bowlers like myself and everybody else in the world, you're gonna have to stay straighter, but even then I had trouble getting through the pins and I'm having a lot more trouble from further in here. 
it's really soft, really grabby. Yeah, so I, I got it back, but I'm not being able to get that ball to close that loop. So you open up the angles, you want that ball to finish through the pins. I'm just not getting that finish. All right, we got one more move. I'm gonna move five more left. Puts us at 20 left and uh, throw a couple shots here and wrap up, talk about it. Grabbed it. Yeah, I sent that pretty wide. That's one of those things where I have a feeling that if I get that ball in the oil, it might not recover. And if it does, chances are it's hitting flat. Let's throw this next one a little bit more through the oil, through the middle of the lane. Let's see how it looks. Well, I got through the pins. Well, I shouldn't say that. It didn't get through the pins. They got back, but I'm not getting that high flush hit. I'm not getting that split the 8-9 look that I got so easily with the pin up. Let's throw one more from that zone. I'm going to really try to keep it in through the oil and not try to send it out to the dry. Just kind of play that fallback shot. Yeah, the longer it sits through oil, the longer it's gonna push through. But I think that's what you're gonna see. At least that's what I see. Night and day difference between pin down and pin up on a symmetrical core ball. Is it usable on today's conditions? Very, very little. You know, there's so many things that I can do and tweak with a pin up layout, use different heights. But when I go to pin down layouts, Mo said it always best, bring your spare ball. And without an extra hole, I think he's right. Pin down layouts with modern bowling balls and the rules that are set by USBC, not as viable as they used to be. Let me know your thoughts on pin down layouts. Do you still use them? Do you like them? Do you use them before? Now you don't use them anymore like myself. That's all for today. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Talk to you soon.